studio, Kathleen, uh, Catherine Amadon from the Museum yeah. of the White Mountains, and also Sarah Garlick from the Museum of the White Mountains. How are you guys today? Fine, thank well, you. And thanks. yourself? Well, I'm g so glad you could come here today. We've been, we've been chatting probably for the last uh, 15 minutes about the Museum of the White Mountains, and what a great uh, thing that we now have here in the White Mountains. So let's start with that. Let's give an introduction to what the Museum of the White Mountains is. The Museum of the White Mountains is a completely transdisciplinary facility. We look at the ecology, history, literature, arts, everything about the White Mountain region. We currently have an opening exhibition that talks about the relationship of time and space in the White Mountains. So for example, in 1827-28 when Thomas Cole went through, it was very slow. We have his diary entry where he talks about the sun and the sound of the water. And his experience is very different from when you get to the Shapley painting in 1870, when you could get in the train in New York City and with a couple changes of train, be at the summit of Mount Washington within 24 hours. Wow. I mean, we think about time and change now with computers and all, but the shift they were going through then was absolutely astounding. And so that's what that opening exhibition looks at with uh, music, art, menus, uh, a coach, all, everything about that part of the 1830 to 1880 experience. That's terrific. Now the Museum of the White Mountains is over in Plymouth as part of Plymouth State University. Yes, we're part of the university and it's an important part of our educational mission um, to train students for career opportunities including museums and uh, historic centers and other areas where they can apply what they learn working in the museum where we have interns, workers, and students that are actively engaged. That's great. Now does Plymouth have a New Hampshire history major, we'll call it that, or something along that yes, realm? Yes, there's a lot of study of New Hampshire, of the region, and then there's a heritage studies program. So there's a lot of focus. Plymouth is a comprehensive regional university, mm. and we're very aware of our surroundings, which is why we moved ahead with the museum. We are the gateway to the White Mountains. Well, that's terrific, and we're looking at the website now, uh, which is, uh, is it museumofwhitemountains.org? Uh, if you t Google Museum of the White Mountains, it will come up because yes, that's what I did. The State I University it. of Pat. Yeah. I Googled it. <laughs> it will pop right up. Yes. That's terrific, and it's a great website too. I was looking on it earlier, and uh, a lot of information about the exhibits, including some photographs from the exhibits, which is kind of neat as opposed yes. to just like, got to come here and look at it. You've yes. actually got kind of a, a little hint of it. Now, Sarah, let's talk about what you're here for and uh, talking about the exhibit that's happening here right in North Conway. Sure, so Catherine's brought me on to work on the second exhibition for the Museum of the White Mountains, which is called Beyond Granite, uh, the, a history of, of mountains and people, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so we're talking about the geologic history of the White Mountains and how that's connected to recreation and land use. And so, the, you know, we have a really neat opportunity with the Museum of the White Mountains. We've created a, a phase one um, a f initial exhibition of panels that looks at recreation and geology, and we have that up at the um, observatory here in North Conway. And so with, with this project, we get a chance to interact with our audience, find out what people are enjoying with the exhibit, as we, and then we can incorporate that feedback into the, the full exhibition at the museum. That's terrific. Now that opens this Thursday. At the observatory, it opens this Thursday. It'll be up for um, two months. And it's a series of, of beautiful photographic panels, um, images from local photographers, Ann Skidmore, Brian Post, Jim Surrett, Jamie Gemetti, and uh, Jerry Monkman. Gorgeous photographer of rock climbers, skiers, hikers, connecting that with the geology. Oh, that, that's terrific. So that'll be a great opportunity for people to uh, at least get their first taste of the Museum of the White Mountains Absolutely. before they go over to Plymouth, or even after they made to go over to Plymouth <laughs> first. Um, so how long is the Museum of the White Mountains, how long have you been in the, the process of creating this museum? The very early concepts are only about three years old. Wow. So it has been um, a very um, fast-paced project. Um, the university had acquired the Methodist Church because it was on the edge of campus. Um, and we came up with the uh, funding for the renovation, architects, renovation, and opening exhibition in about two and a half years. Wow. Which was a very ambitious timeline. 
And uh, now I also was reading, because there was a great article by Tom Eastman in the Conway Daily Sun yes. about the Museum of the White Mountains, and I think that was an introduction to, for a lot of us about the museum. And uh, you've had some terrific donations in terms of uh, exhibit pieces. We have. The founding collection from Dan Noel was about 8,000 objects and images, stereoscopics, postcards, books, glass plates, just an incredible array of material that he spent his life um, gathering. And that was the founding collection, and that helped us sort of go from concept to, wow, we have a collection, let's right. do the museum now. <laughs> now let's have a museum. Um, and then we recently had a donation of 6,000 books from Jack and Ann Newton, Lucy Crawford first edition, right wow. up to every edition of the uh, AMC White Mountain Guides. Um, and we've had a collection of paintings by White Mountain women artists donated. We've had a number of just absolutely amazing donations. Well, it's it's so it's so fascinating. We were talking before about the the history of the White Mountains. As you know, there's history all throughout this country and throughout the world, but we have such unique history, especially as you talk about the the people moving up here and traveling up here. It was it was an arduous task at the at the least. You know, you're going through woods and and then there are rivers and streams and ponds and everything. Um, so it was not just, hey, let's let's take a hike and go up there. Right. You, you had to commit to it, I guess. Is the you best had to description. commit to it. And if you moved up here to farm, uh, we grow rocks. You yes. know, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> <Plenty> <laughs> geology is a great topic because they just keep popping up when you try to garden. It's it's so funny. I we uh, I read one time. Uh, that there are 90,000 miles of rock walls in northern New England. Mm -hmm. And you go down through a town like Sandwich or whatever, of yes. which I think half those, that 90,000 are down there. <laughs> and it is, they, they just keep cropping up. And, and yep. you know, those rocks, each one of those rocks is a little bit of history. Yes. And uh, New Hampshire, of course, just I embellished in history. I'm, you know, a big, big fan of it. Uh, and I look forward to, you know, getting over and, and seeing that. So let's talk more about, um, the exhibit at the observatory where you, you you mentioned how people can become interactive to that and how did you come up with the idea of let's say hey let's let's get feedback let's let's branch out of that because usually museums are kind of like this is what we want to present you're taking it a step further yeah we, we've had a really neat opportunity I think with um, with the work that Catherine's been doing with the museum and the partnerships she's building all throughout the state so um, having this you know the partnership with the observatory so we have a space and and we had this um, opportunity to put these panels together. We're going to have some feedback with surveys, you know, right at the observatory and online. So they have the Museum of the White Mountains has um, online exhibitions. They'll be traveling to other uh, educational sites throughout the state. So that gives us this opportunity to say, you know, which stories resonate with you? Um, are you are you people interested more in climate? Are they interested in glaciation? The bedrock geology? You know, we're going to be looking at all of those aspects of science along with recreation, land use, things like that. Yeah, and that's, a, I think, w what you just rattled down there is that's what we have up here. We have all those different mm -hmm. fascinations, whether you're interested in the history or you're interested in the in the, the natural elements or whatever it is. There's just so <laughs> much that you could probably never take it in. You must be overwhelmed with all of this information and like, I am. <laughs> Your and, mind must be going, Whoa! And, you know, there are so many people with so much expertise that, you know, working with someone like Sarah, it's great. You know, she comes in with her very specialized knowledge of geology. And, you know, she, she wrote a wonderful book that is where the idea of the exhibition came from. So I, I wrote a book that's called Flakes, Jugs, and Splitters, a, a Rock Climber's Guide to Geology. And so Catherine was getting into rock climbing. She found my book and she said, you know, let's, let's, let's work together. Let's see what we can do. And, and for me, it's a great way to connect our love of the mountains. You know, many of us are up here to, to climb and to ski and to hike. And what I like to do is kind of draw that interest into something a little bit deeper with an understanding of why the mountains are here. Yeah, and, and there's a million stories to tell just with the mountains. One of my favorite spots is uh, up on Mount Washington. There's uh, right on the, a bend on the road, there's rocks and there's ripples in the rocks. And they're like, why are those ripples in the rocks? And, and, and you gotta figure they're also 6,000 feet up in the air. And those so. rocks originated as ocean floor sediments. Right. So and, they've and then, been yeah. heated, compressed, folded into these beautiful mountains. Yeah, just amazing. Well, it just sounds like uh, you guys are off to a roaring start. 
uh, with the we're Museum excited. of the White Mountains, yeah. and I, it just sounds like very exciting. Uh, oh, there's a there's a shot of uh, oh no, that's of the poster. I was thinking that was your book. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're showing your book, so. uh, but just really sounds like you're you're off and running. Uh, what are the hours for uh, both the exhibit and the museum? The museum hours are uh, t uh, Monday, th sorry, Tuesday through Friday, from ten to five, and Saturday and Sunday from twelve to five. And the observatory is open seven days a week, um, except for holidays. So you can get down there. It's, a, it's the Weather Discovery Center in North Conway, and it's free and open to the public um, every day. And go down there. Now let me ask you a, a question here. Hopefully I won't put you on the spot about the museum. Uh, in terms of how it's set up, um, obviously people who uh, my age are going to go through and find it. Have you developed some kid-friendly aspects oh, of it too? Because I saw that there's some school group information. Yes, there is. We have a couple of things. For our youngest visitors, we have a treasure hunt where they take a uh, page and they need find the different things that are on it. Great. For somewhat older kids, I guess middle school, we have, and, and actually we have a lot of adults doing this too, a compass activity where you start in a spot and you do a certain number of paces in a degree southwest or northeast and you tour the exhibition and learn how to use a compass at the same time. Terrific. Then we have a map that people can take home with them that has uh, photographs of the paintings from the 1830 to 1880 range and underneath it is the GPS reading. So you can go and you can stand in the exact spot that the artist was standing in and look at that place and then you can take a picture of your friends, your family, whatever, standing in that spot and upload it to our website, oh, The Cairn. That's great. Um, and that allows a kind of sharing and networking to go on. So The Cairn is our separate interactive social networking site where people can talk about the current show and the upcoming exhibition. Well, and th you know that's where we are in the world today. I mean, <laughs> however we want to admit it, yep. you know, it's all about social networking. It's all about instant communication, and uh, it just sounds like you guys have involved it all. So I, r I wish you luck, Thank and you. I will Thank definitely you. check out the exhibit at the Mount Washington Observatory for the next two months, and also get over to uh, Plymouth to the Museum of the White Mountains. So, uh, and the website again. Just go to the Museum of the White Mountains, Google that, and you will that's the, pop right into it. <laughs> that's the easiest way to do it. Well, uh, Sarah, Catherine, thank you so much for coming down today, and uh, we you. shall see you again.